meeting to order the Coach Inc. Economic Development Authority. It's Wednesday, November 21st at 1 o'clock. We're in the county boardroom. And the uh, first order is to approve the agenda with any additions to missions. Mr. Chair, I just, uh, if I could introduce one other piece, and that's just the Veterans Service Office lease agreement. Uh, we have a updated version, so I just wanted to make the board aware of that and introduce it in. Okay. Move to approve. Uh, agenda has with the addition. We have a motion by Commissioner Bright. Second. Second by the mayor. Any discussion? Call the question. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Right. Aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries. We would ask you to approve the minutes from 10 18. Having read the minutes, I would move approval of them. Thank you, Mayor. We have a motion to approve the minutes. I will concur. And second by Commissioner McBride. Any discussion on the minutes? Hearing none, call the question. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Who's opposed? Motion carries. Uh, public comment is a little bit sparse today. <coughs> so we're going to move right up to the Treasurer's report, Commissioner. Thank you, sir. Uh, Today's Wednesday, I think Monday it was. I sat with Kyra uh, through the bills. As first, let's look at the cold weather testing. Uh, we had a transfer from the JLR account to cold weather testing of $12,000. Obviously, we need to pay our bills. We turn over to uh, page one. We have $10,006.47. And the next page, we have a bill for Jackson Electric for $4,469.96. That makes co the testing $14,476.43. Uh, going through, I pretty much standard bill. I just cannot believe how much power and internet and phone costs us every month. I mean, it is a ton of money. Chair, if I could uh, yes. well, apologize for the, for the copies. We're having trouble with our Xerox, but um, these these do reflect kind of again some of the finishing up of the uh, projects that we've got uh, currently going on at the test building as we prepare for another season. We've got a lot of projects that are in play right now, and they're reflected in some of the bills there. Um, but you're right, uh, Commissioner McBride. Uh, the, the power use still out there. And, and internet now with that fiber optic to the building and uh, to both sides. It, it is expensive. So there's, go ahead. Oh, Mr. Chair, if I may. So I see in the uh, page one, the net working work TV and installation is 700. And then over on page three, you got the internet access, JLR, the network networking work TV and installation another 1370 are those just monthly claims no they are. That's, that's Justin Shipley we uh, we put a monitor JLR requested a, a large screen monitor in their shop which tells the outside temperature temperature of each of the cold rooms and then the forecast so they can see kind of live um, so we put a new one and that's the one that's the first one you referenced in the small shop to, to mirror that. It's a very nice feature, um, and Mr. Shipley provided that. And then he had to do some additional networking with the system in uh, on the JLR side. Um, uh, with, with Ethernet and the power, they have backup energy, and they've got a lot more complicated system over there, and it just required some, um, Mr. Shipley to come in and do some, re uh, I guess, re-networking over on that side. So if we hold with, hold improvements then um, improvements to the uh, JLR system Correct. which we are reimbursed for. Correct. So the cold weather testing bill is fourteen thousand four seventy six and forty three cents. And if you turn over, then we have, we have with the JLR accounts that we have twenty five hundred and sixty three dollars and forty cents and three thousand six hundred. Those right for the next, turn the next page, which is a grand total of eight thousand one hundred eighty-seven dollars and forty cents. So, uh, 
I didn't total those together for the cold weather testing in JLR, but it uh, looks like it's going to be somewhere around $23,000, dollars I didn't total them up. I guess I can do that. present the total for COVID testing in GLR $22,663.83. And I guess that reflects why we, we need to transfer uh, from GLR over. So. And that's a, Commissioner, that's a, a motion to pay yes, the COVID testing bills. If we have a motion to pay the COVID testing bills, then I would request a second, please. And that, does that include the approval of the transfer also? Yes. I would then second the motion. Any discussion on the motion? Call the question. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Mm -hmm. Motion carries. Okay. Uh, Next would be KDA. KEDA. KEDA. Excuse me. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, turned over the first page. Uh, bills. $21,752.52. We'll consider this page separate from uh, page two. So uh, if you look again, big hitters, which of the uh, each month is our salaries and benefits. Uh, we have cell phones and uh, the office rent. Now, uh, after next month or so, Paul, would, that will be reduced. Is that correct? Because the VSO will be picking up portion of that rent. Are you going to pay that? And then is the county going to pay Yes. That? It will get reimbursed. So you be that will still be a complete expense, and you will have some revenue. Right. To okay. Apply to it. Yep. All right. So uh, the bill for KEDA twenty one thousand seven fifty two fifty two fifty two cents. I present that as correct to be paid. That's my motion. I have a motion by Commissioner McBride to. Pay the non-paid bills from for the Economic Development Authority itself, and we seek a second on the motion. Well, I didn't hear all the arguments, but uh, Commissioner McBride's got a good reputation. So, yeah, right. Where they say all second. Thank you, sir. I have a motion by Commissioner Pavlik. Any other questions or discussion on the bill? Hearing none, call the question. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. And on the next page, uh, Mr. Chair, we have uh, Community Partners Research, the bill of $15,950. Uh, that is past through dollars. Uh, KEDA has been the uh, fiscal, 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 fiscal agent. I couldn't come up with the word fiscal agent for, for that study and for the group of uh, people that, that have supported that through the last few months. So. Will we pay, pay the money to uh, special services that were rendered by community health partners, our community partners research, $15,950. Mr. Chip, did that represents half of the total uh, per the contract when they get the draft? Yep. And then upon the final presentation, then we'll pay there. Second? Second. Bob, your turn. Go ahead. Anybody want to quiz uh, the ball on the results? If not, call the question. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Thank you very much. Paul, well, one question on the. On the uh, there should be a meeting coming up shortly again with the. Uh, uh, next Monday. Oh, Monday. It is 26. Monday? Yep. yep. I'll touch on it, my director. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Thank which, you. Is, uh, which is up right now. Let you take the floor. Well, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, with, between the election and deer hunting, it's been kind of a quiet period here between, uh, after our last meeting. And congratulations to all those and, and Representative Beckley who's with us today. Um, a couple of things, though, initiatives that are still uh, ongoing, which are kind of exciting that they're uh, moving forward. 
Um, and I did want to just touch on the cantilever because it was exciting to see that energy from that project. They had a little uh, ceremony out in Rainier, tried to break through that uh, whiskey barrel <laughs> with an axe, and it's tough. Uh, tough to. Uh, we were in the I'd love to see that. The, the vets never had a problem with it. What's that? Feds never had a problem. Yeah, back you look at the video and they're just smashing right through and they had better axes there, or the barrels were cheaper. But anyway. Were you there, guys? No, no, but I saw the video. They got a lot of play out of it. There was nice attendance there. Um, but the project is underway. Uh, uh, some block going up, foundation work is being done, and they're waiting on the steel. But um, the project is getting a lot, of, um, uh, a lot of momentum, so it's good to see that move forward. Um, International Falls Business Park, uh, uh, same uh, situation in that Mr. Roach has begun construction uh, last week, uh, digging some foundation and footings for his building uh, due to a series of delays, but uh, he is he is underway and hopes to have it uh, up by, uh, in, by this uh, spring. Um, we continue to work uh, with another interested party on uh, an expansion of the of the existing park uh, on the Second Avenue East Side, um, and uh, they went just went before the, the county to talk a, a little bit about um, uh, where they're at. But uh, uh, we've sent them some some additional information on on the uh, preliminary plat, and so uh, it's uh, we're at a point in time now where where we need to move that preliminary plat to a formalized plat. So we'll go through the process, and we'll need to go. Up put an RFP out for survey work and for a firm to help us put that uh, new expanded plat together. Um, so I guess I look for a, for a motion supporting that. Uh, I don't know if I need a motion or if we to put out, uh, out an RFP for survey and professional services. That's a request right now. I'll move, Mr. Chair. Mr. Pallet moves. I would second. Uh, so that would be uh, seeking a plat? Yeah, to, we, we need to do an expanded plat, which will require some survey work and uh, some. In, in there's a formal process through the city um, that we'll go through. So you, you will, Mr. Chair, if I may, uh, you put out an RFP for, to do that. We have not had a formal request from this party for move in any kind of agreement yet, have we? No, but um, the indications that I'm getting and the work that's being done, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty firm uh, uh, project, and uh, we would need to do the planning process yeah. in any event, so the timing works out pretty well. And I've been working with uh, uh, Matt Gwynn from the county, who's been very helpful, and, and as well as other city and uh, county stakeholders to kind of uh, work through some of the details on the plat. We got an additional 17 acres tax work it around our existing. So, uh, oh, just what I want to wonder too is because uh, this summer the county plans on uh, grind and resurface and, and uh, curb work on Second Avenue East. I mean, we want to be sure that anything we're doing, if, if we're going to do any uh, utility work, that kind of coincides with that. Because I remember years ago, because I lived there. County put that road all in brand new, and, and about uh, a month later, it came Four around and dug sewer and water in, <laughs> just just to make vacant lots. So we want to make sure we coordinate that. Yeah, oh, that's that's a good good point. Yeah. Well, well now, and and I guess uh, in this plat, the county is acting as a partner, and I'm not sure what status that. On, on the Northland Council, the county proved at the last meeting to be a partner in their seeking funds. Right, yeah, I, and so I, I don't seeking know. Seeking funds for a, the, for a grant, yes. Yeah, so yeah it would be the fiscal agent. Fiscal agent for it. Uh, just, just trying to understand the, the governance here. Does that does that mean that you're a partner in seeking the platting? Or where, where does that put the county in, in this process? Is it just just with regard to that seeking bonds from the uh, uh, Department of uh, Human Services? The, the way I understood it is we were just strictly going to be a fiscal agent for the grant purpose. 
I'm really aware of nothing in any part of, any part of the construction or flooding or. Well, okay, but what role does the county play in Northland? Because you're you're a member of their board. Um, is the county a member or something? Or what? what it's, I, I'm it's, just understanding the gov governance of this thing. I don't. Northland it, it, it operates uh, completely separate of the government entities, although we have a lot of contracts separate with, with the county, especially social services. And to that end, uh, you know, we're a, uh, we were a three-county organization 26 years ago when I started. Aiken, Itasca, and Kuchiching. Aiken dropped out, went out on their own for a few years, but very difficult business to say the least. And uh, now, now we're, we're back in with Aiken. So you've got a three-county consortium, and it's, it's, not a, it's not an official joint powers agreement like counties have. Mike's familiar with that. Uh, but it's, it's consists of three counties, and we have uh, representatives from all, you know, from those counties that run the board, so to speak. Um, a lot of input comes in from from the counties, especially social services, because that's, that's generally a place where uh, one of our customer base, if you will, or client base uh, comes from, but uh, referrals from other areas. I guess it really, which an interesting question. So, I mean, is, is it the county part owner of no. Northland? No. 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 Northland? Northland owns on itself. Kuchichang County funded the purchase of the recovery right. center. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's, <laughs> in all the years I've been on that board, 26 years, that's the only time we've ever come to the county for any money at all. We provided all the services, and I mean much needed mental health services uh, without going to any of the counties. Now, Rob sitting on there with me for the last couple of years, and as he knows, it's much di it's different in each county now. They've got Blandon and uh, access to more to grants and things that we don't have there. So that's how we've done ex a lot of the expansions in, uh, in Grand Rapids area, other areas of Itasca County. So it's just just a different means. So each county has a member on the board or several members mm -hmm. on the board of directors of Northland? Correct. Okay. And they're not they're not all <coughs> government officials. I happen to be a commissioner and uh, there's a state representative, but uh, you know, we have people from other you know, other areas of uh, professional expertise that we have on that uh, board also. So it's a it's a it's a mix. And it's worked well. You know, they've, they've been very successful, but it's, it's a very difficult business, to say the least. And Rob's learned just for being there for two years. Well, I'm very much needed. I, I supported, as I said to the, at the county board meeting, I'm just trying to understand the governance yeah. of all of that. Uh, and self governed we were, we were just about to go broke 26 years ago, and I always tell that story. And uh, we, hired, uh, we hired a new director see if we could get things going right and he said the first thing I, if you hire me he said the first thing I'm gonna do is <laughs> cut a bunch of these services and he laid them na named laid them right out and so I, I looked at him and I said well you know if you're gonna do that how, how are we gonna help anyone and he said wait we need to be a successful business first or we can't help anybody and so he just took a completely different approach and the board went along with it and we we're able to turn it around and get it back on its feet I mean we were about to close and uh, just have come up light years from there. Uh, he just retired, but I mean, it, uh, just a different way of doing business. And he was being a business, he had a big uh, business background as well as health, but he was able to look at it from a business perspective, which you really have to do to make anything successful, especially when you're so a nonprofit. Non so is it a nonprofit? I don't know that we're officially registered as a nonprofit. I mean, it was just kind of formed and. and, uh, and it must be a 501c3. Well, we're under, we're, whoops, I'm sorry, we're under something, but I just don't know what to do. Yeah. I can find out, I can get all this stuff right. Oh, and Mr. Chair, if I may, yes. um, so, so I think uh, Commissioner McBride's point to um, the director is to maybe get in touch with Joe Sutherland with regard to um, if we're doing some platting up there and, and where services will come from and so forth. Yeah, I, I, I guess we're going to have to know exactly. I mean, obviously, they're going to be water and sewer and, and gas and where the, 
where the utilities are going to come from. Right. And curb cuts and curb cuts. Right. And that's kind of, so we need to kind of coordinate that. Yeah, no, the timing is really good. And, and like I said, we're working with Matt, and we've got easements built into the plat, and all that will be part of the process. Yeah, I think this is scheduled, I think second half of it was either July, sometime mid time frame. Yeah. So we, we have time. It just. We did. Well, I certainly hope that the fire fund is successful in getting these bonds some bonding money to help with this facility. Be great for the community and the county. You want us to seek a motion uh, so that you can move forward to issue an RFP and a survey? Correct. You made the motion? Yep, you made the motion, I second. Yeah, we did. Good, good to go. Right? Yeah, All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Oh, you have wait, wait a second? I have wait as first, and I don't have a second. Oh, well, I, I think it was well, made. I, thought, I did make it. Okay. Well, <laughs> making me look bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. All right. That's good. So I, I called it. It's yep, a, you called the question. Uh, thank you. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, and another initiative that continues to move forward, and uh, and and Robbins, because you're out in the in the region, you know that this child care uh, issue or lack thereof is is a real challenge for both employers and, and for families. So uh, uh, we engaged Jeff Andrews of First Children's Finance um, uh, to look at Kutishin County and uh, we've become a uh, First Children's Rural Child Care Innovative Program uh, candidate. Say that fast. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so Jeff has uh, been up here, this was his second return now to meet with our core group uh, basically to look at uh, Cooch Ching's specific situation and uh, Jeff brings with him uh, and his group a whole uh, a whole history of working with communities large and small so we've got a good core group he was back up with some good data and talking about what other communities have done um, talking about the importance of the, the home-based daycare um, Joanne's been a real driver behind this I applaud her and, and Kyra is, is on the core team as well because uh, well she's a uh, mother with uh, with a, uh, an infant in daycare and, and uh, knows firsthand the challenges. Um, we've got some social service people from the county involved as well. So uh, uh, we'll, we're going to be working with them for a two-year period to look at specifically what can we do to help the existing providers as well as provide different di uh, additional opportunities. Um, and then uh, also we heard from Isaac Meyer Kutaska. They're applying for a early Head Start uh, partnership grant for Itasca and Cooch. Um, uh, through, it's a federal grant, I believe, uh, uh, Joanne. And so they're looking um, to, to help alleviate some of the shortages for both uh, Itasca and Cooch. And they're working with the city of North Home specifically, as well as International Falls. And um, Joanne, I don't know if you have anything to add. Uh, on a Put you right on the spot. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Good afternoon, Joanne. Thank you. Yeah. Um, we're our core group is going to meet again on Monday, the twenty sixth, and um, we're going to discuss. Um, Isaac had asked us to um, submit uh, a recommendation um, supporting um, his initiative for this grant. Um, we are going to review it. I had um, some questions about you know where he was doing this, how many spots. What, um, was he going to open for toddler and infant and you know some questions like that because um, we haven't really been involved in what he's been doing and how um, another one of my questions also was um, how our group can is going to partner with him because I mean we don't want to be two separate things working on the same mission with child care um, and we have a process that you know we're going through with you know Jeff Anders and First Children's Finance and um, that so. I guess that's one of the um, things that we're going to talk about at our meeting and again we're going to talk about the next steps moving forward. Um, I think we're going to probably schedule um, our town hall meetings which is where we're going to um, have large meetings, um, invite people in and talk about the data that we've gathered um, from all the studies that we've done and all the different um, like the forum and everything, the surveys, um, we've had some online surveys that we've tried to get out to people and uh, bring the information back and, and uh, get the community involved and what they think some solutions may be or could be. So 
including Little Fork. In, and including Little Fork, um, we have a couple new uh, members on our core team. Um, Carrie Clay Bundy, um, she's an administrator over at the Little Fork um, Care Center. Um, they, since uh, Pineview moved out, they have started renovating um, that area a little bit. And there actually is um, room for somebody who would like to come in and do have a um, either a center or just have a home daycare, but have it um, in that area, which is possible. You're allowed to have a family um, service. It doesn't have to be at your house. It can be in another facility like a church or um, that type of thing. So she's looking for um, somebody that might be interested in doing something like that. Um, and that space that she has. And it is it's a nice space and the meals will be then provided by, you know, the facility right there. So they wouldn't have to, you know, so they would kind of work together um, to provide some child care in the Little Fork area because she said it's, it's needed um, for their workers a lot. Um, and also we have a member, um, another member from the Rainier um, City Council and um, Joanne Kellner, she is going to be on our core team also. So getting some additional groups from across the, um, additional people from across the county to get involved in this, and I think that's really good, too. So. And, and thank, yeah, it, it is, and it's another, you know, rather than sit back and admire a problem, we've brought in some really good people, and this Jeff Anders is terrific with, uh, and, and, you know, constantly stressing we're not trying to put any daycare, home daycare out of business. In fact, we want to strengthen them. You know, provide some business consulting services possibly because in recognizing them as a small business and and so um, it's moving it's we got a good start it's it's a good team yeah and and um, I think our, our team is really focused and um, I think that we are working fairly fast at a fast pace to you know find some solutions so I'm I'm really happy about where our team is going <coughs> mr. chair um, Paul or Joanne, the, the, uh, and maybe you don't, maybe I'm too far ahead here with questions about the grant um, where it says that it would add an infant classroom and a toddler classroom. Do um, you know what the, like the time would be? I mean, would it, is the grant going to cover or subsidize for a period of years and then it has to stand on its own? Or, do we know what that's one of the questions? That was one of the questions okay. that I had too was okay. what, um, how long is the funding going to be able to provide these slots? Um, it was, um, I think they said what, 24 slots in Kuchichin County? Um, so, and I said, well, yeah, how many and how long? And is it only available to low income? What are the guidelines? How, you know, yeah, how long is the funding going to be? Um, how many staff members are going to be needed for, um, you know, to support this? And is that money available somewhere? You know, and the space requirements is the grant um, for remodeling space, building new space. What is, you know, what exactly is, um, you know, the grant able to provide with this? Is it just the slots or is it actually more than that? So I, we kind of need to find out a little bit more information. And then, uh, if I may, Mr. Chairman, you put your um, small business pencil to it and make sure that it's going to be financially uh, stable. Right. And that was um, that's one thing too. Um, I our some of our core group has talked already about you know okay we need to look at also the feasibility of this before we say that you know our group is going to completely support this we need to make sure that it's going to be sustainable you know, in the long run, and we're not just supporting something that, you know, is good for the next couple of months and then just falls apart because there's either no funding or there's no, you know, there's not enough of a backbone there. So we want to make sure that what we do, and that's why we are part of this first children's finance process, is it's a process and it's finding out, you know, going through the steps to make sure that this is going to work for our community, it's going to work for us, and it's going to be sustainable for us. Very good. Thank you. It's like anything that has government oversight. It's way more complicated than you think when you get into the details of some of this. So uh, it's been an education for me, especially. Uh, Mr. Chair. I'm sorry. Before we leave the subject, it's going to be interesting to see because we've pushed hard the last three years for increased pre-K funding for our schools. 
and that in itself I think is a good thing, but the thing to worry about on that is the four-year-olds are the money makers for daycares mm -hmm. because it takes less staff for four-year-olds than it does for three-year-olds than it does for two-year-olds. And so you take if you take a whole block out, which I, I'm a firm believer in pre-K education, I think it's good for our schools and good for the kids because they're ready, but you take that whole block of four-year-olds out potentially and then, then we might be creating a, a bigger daycare problem in, in this, especially in rural Minnesota. And have the problems we get older too, it takes well, more <laughs> staff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that, I mean, that's something to think about oh, right. when you guys are... We discussed yeah. that, yeah, yeah. it's come up, yeah. And we did talk about that, it came up at the forum too, and you know, that's what um, Jeff had said, is basically, you know, infants, you lose money on, toddlers, you may break even, the preschool is where you make your money yeah. on, and if you have other programs that are pulling away you know away from the family providers that really hurts them and so how can we and that's part of our our goal in this whole process too is to make sure that we are supporting our current providers and giving them the resources that they need and making sure that their businesses are still here and still able to function while still providing services that you know are, are for others too that we can expand so it's kind of a a thin line to walk on but you have to look at both sides, yeah. so you're right. Mr. Chair, uh, if I could, I, uh, was there any more on this? I just wonder, I see we're landing on the next subject here, and that made me think, getting back to North Span, uh, Dale Adams from Grand Rapids is the mayor, yeah. and he's, he's been on that board with me for five or six years. Do you ever meet, do you ever talk to him at all? I haven't. You haven't met him yet, have you? Uh, I think I've met him. I met him. Okay. Well, anyway, if you ever get a chance at you know conference, he would be a good person to talk to. I'd like to get him up here. He comes up usually once a year. We have the whole Northland uh, group come up here, uh, for, so they you know so the other members can see what's going on here. So be a good opportunity. Make sure we invite you guys. Here, so. All right, thank You're you. Good. Thank you. I'd have forgot if I didn't uh, think about it. I thought why. Go ahead, Paul. And, and so Kutaska is making the application, is that the, yeah. the organization yeah. is taking the lead on this? For both Itasca and Cooch for this specific grant, and we'll find out more as we get into it on Monday. Okay. Yeah, and we will be meeting on Monday, as Joan mentioned. Um, yeah, I did want to touch on the Bland and Broadband because there's nothing better than spend a couple uh, Spend a couple. Uh, us, spend a couple days with some technical people talking, talking bits and gigabits and bites and um, no, it was actually really good. Uh, we were invited to the uh, border to border broadband conference in Brainerd last last month, right after our key meeting, and uh, we sent a good good group. Again, we've got a real solid core team of of folks uh, who went down and one of the really valuable pieces of going to this was we got to sit down with some cons technical consultants. With, with mapping, and, and we brought in, by the way, Jackie um, Nagel from the county to be on our core team because she does a lot of the GIS and very familiar with broadband. And really look at the status of broadband in your county and where the weaknesses are, who owns what, and that in and of itself identifying who's, who's got the infrastructure in place, who's riding on top of somebody else, and both both the internet and uh, and uh, cellular, um, and then trying to look up what technology is available and how do you how do you gap or how do you bridge these gaps that are out there in, in rural areas? There was a couple of other counties, Lesueur and um, southwestern county, that very uh, ag, and they had these just large expanses with even more scarcer than Cooch, and it's like how do they make these connections? Well. We sat down and, and actually gave a presentation to a board um, about Cooch and did some kind of napkin math on it just to give them an idea. And to a, to a person, the committee said, you know, this is pretty doable given that if the legislature comes through with some border-to-border uh, -border grant money and, and then some of the USDA grant stuff, that the other counties were looking at you know, three hundred and fifty to $500,000, uh, no, more than that. Um, 350 million, I think, it was Lesur. Um, the, the numbers were off the chart. I was focusing on that numbers, but um, to, to bridge some of these gaps, especially in the Birchdale area, um, uh, paper makers. Um, uh, ironically, in Cooch, Northolme has got the best 
network right now in terms of capacity and coverage. There are areas uh, still within the county down by Ray. The lake um, area. The lake area it was a big, big piece. And because of the density in the lake area and paper makers, um, so the providers were saying, you know, this is doable. Um, this is doable. So um, we're going to meet next month. Uh, and this, again, is a two-year commit commitment as a blend and broadband community to continue working on this. Um, we got funding from Blandon, uh, the initial pot of funding, the grant for 75000 So that will be coming uh, very shortly here to us. And then we'll continue to work with our partners. But uh, it, was, it was real valuable and, uh, uh, again, a good education for me looking at what's out there. But realizing that so many counties in the state are facing the same issues that we're facing, the rural areas, that there's, it's just the economics of it are really tough to overcome. So, Ryan and I still are having heartburn over uh, okaying those towers to be built. There's two of them, one, one, one out here and one in, uh, in the lake area. And that was how many years ago, and they still have not put a thing on them. And we, we learned a lesson there. We will never okay a tower agreement again without a, uh, you know, a written assurance and a timeline for them to get something up there. They were in a big hurry at the time, and you know we thought everything was going to go, and nothing's ever happened. I mean, I don't know how many years it's been. Very frustrating, because a lot of people, and yes, it's, it's it's all over the county. That's true. And I get most of the complaints from the lake area in the summer, especially from the summer people who come up here and are not able to access what they need to do that business and communications uh, uh, easily. Representative. So it's interesting you brought that up, Commissioner Pavlik, because I got an inquiry from the Vermilion Lake area on cell phone towers, and they've got terrible service down there, too. It's, it's, it's Verizon's virtually non-existent, they have a little bit of AT&T. So I put an inquiry into both com companies, AT&T got back to me, they're planning on building three more towers in the Vermilion area. And <clears throat> I have a big expansion in northern Minnesota in, in general. And, and Verizon is doing nothing. Or I have, I've talked to their representative twice, and it's supposed to be get, we're supposed to be getting their work plan for Northern Minnesota, and, and I've, had, he hasn't gotten back to me. So it, it's uh, just interesting how these two companies go. Those those two towers were Verizon towers that we have. Yeah, built. neither one of those have been built. They haven't even built. The one is that's the mall area, just yeah. between there and the golf course, and then the one on the O'Leary property, which is supposed to cover those two. Yeah. Two uh, vacant areas, and, and of course we had the vacant one up at uh, Thunderbird, Thunderbird. Thunderbird Lodge. And there was rumors that, that that there was some stuff being built, started there, but supposedly building put up and power run to it. No, nothing else. It's frustrating. It's frustrating. Well, that, that's a, that supposedly was an AT and T tower yes. at yeah. the Rainy Lake Houseboat Center, and so I mean if they're looking at at having something at Lake Vermilion. There's some way that we can get their we, commitment. We got this tower sitting here ready to go. We put the yeah. antenna on this tower. The tower has been there for. I mean, the tower is going to be old before the, they ever get an antenna. <laughs> you know, that was uh, Kushner Hansel was sitting on board at that time, and uh, that was built by a company by I think in the Minnesota Tower, and I think they did it as speculation or the chicken or the egg, and they're going to build a tower and hope somebody's going to jump on it, but. They never had the agreement with AT&T before they actually built the tower. So now this tower sits there with no customers on it. We we okay one to Dick Rappers, but yeah, yeah, those are the two, two Verizons. Yeah. And and those are challenging, and or the, they, they can be very contentious with the neighbors. It puts a lot of stress on on you folks to approve those, and then to go through that process and have no delivery on the other end. It's just and, and Verizon at the lake is on the old Ranger Tower. Ranger, Ranger tower. tower, yes. Which is why everything's so limited. Just but there's there's very little service once you get past 332 going south. If you have Verizon, you lose Verizon from there all the way yeah. practically to Or. So yep. I mean, Verizon is not what they're cracked up to be. And I, I would say that publicly. Can we ask for another provider? <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually, from what I know of. Those, those are the two providers that you want. The rest of them are kind of small and more regional. 
my brother comes up to your home and he has T-Mobile. Once in a while when he's sitting on the Rock Ridge, you can get a text to go off. And that's, that's it. So, I mean, they, they would be fine for emergency. But so, I mean, I would say those are the two you want. And I, I, I told my wife after I heard what they're doing down in the million area, we might be, we might be switching to another provider. So. Yep. I think the commissioner has made, made a good point here. Uh, these folks at Vermillion, if uh, you're working with them, I would certainly uh, have it written as to what day they're going to have that uh, service available. Well, and I uh, thank you, Mr. Chair and uh, Mayor Anderson. That's uh, certainly from my experience in the board. <laughs> Those two towers, one of them was supposed to help me for crying out loud, <laughs> and they aren't, they aren't up. So, I mean, for our area out there uh, and stuff, and they aren't up. So, yeah, that's, that's something I'll definitely bring up to them. But, I mean, that. It's the other part of it, that Vermilion Lake Association, that's a powerful group. There's a lot of, you know, the, the resort interest down there is, uh, they get people's attention when they start asking questions, so. Is that it, Paul, as far as your plan to uh, Yeah, I just, <coughs> Paul uh, hasn't been working with Century Telog in the western part, of, northwestern part of Cooch, and uh, they put put line in the ground from Clemson, Minnesota, right at the Lake of the Woods line, Right to France Germany here in the last month. Well, they had a heck of a time in the October weather, but they're right there. And I just, I don't know, I just strongly suspected that I, I, there's an initiative to get Wi Fi in every state park. And I think that's why they went to France Germany. Interesting. And as far as I know, Paul Bunyan is at the Verizon Tower in Birchdale. So these two, Century Dell, they're one mile apart right now. Maybe a mile and a half. So, and what service does Paul Binion provide? Well, they provide they, they cherry pick. They they provide the school, yep. and they go all the way and they go to the Verizon Tower. Internet or yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, they ran that line right through Birchdale. Then, uh, right through Birchdale, and they but when they got to Francis Avenue, they stopped. Stuff. But I, I think it's because of the state initiative the Century Tell got enough money to make sure that every state park has Wi-Fi. Otherwise, you know, they're not going to get visitors anymore. I, and, and Mr. Chair, our group has has uh, interviewed Century Century Link um, about kind of their, you know, their current infrastructure and their plans going forward. It's really tricky to get information, even the, the existing stuff. Um, but the good news is, I think we're making progress on all these fronts in terms of, especially the the, the pipe in the ground. It's the it's the the, the last mile type of configurations that are going to be a little bit tricky, but we're making progress. And then to get it to the home, you know, right. that'll be another another process completely, but it is there, so it does, as Paul says, it gives you some initial hope that, you know, maybe they'll have some high-speed internet, because without it, you, know, you can't work from home, you can't, there's nothing you can do. Okay, a couple other things I just want to touch on. Uh, uh, this Monday as well, uh, next Monday, excuse me, um, the Cooch Housing Collaborative will be meeting with Steve uh, Greisert. Uh, 11 o'clock? 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock to 11.30 on uh, at Bacchus. At Bacchus. Uh, we're going to review. They, they presented a draft. Uh, they, they took some feedback and input, and we'll be, we'll be presenting kind of a final draft of the countywide study, and then after that, uh, they will go out into the each, the, uh, not individually, but they'll go to throughout the county and present uh, for the rest of the communities within the county, North Elm, Birch, uh, North Elm, Big Falls, Little Fork, Rainier. Um, they've done individual. They skipped Silverdale? They, yeah. They, <laughs> okay. they, uh, they did put Mizpah in there, though, just because they're incorporated. So anyway, that'll be rolling out here um, uh, very soon here, and that's that came together very quickly. These guys are very good, too, community partners. Um, Mr. Chair, with regard to that, is uh, Bacchus AB working towards some kind of a uh, plan for the old AB building, and is that kind of going to build off of this? It's my understanding that they're, they've been, they, you know, they looked at it in the past, that they're, gonna, they're looking at it again and seeing if, it, it, if it's viable to, to uh, Put housing in AB. Yeah. That issue came up today, didn't it, Brian? Yeah, it was a general discussion. Yeah. Um, a couple of other items. Uh, 
as I mentioned, the, we're gearing up for uh, the upcoming test season. It's again, we're going to be very, very busy. Um, very pleased with uh, the, the response we're getting from our past customers and some of the upgrades we're making at the facility. Um, and we had a couple representatives from an automaker here earlier uh, this month to tour our facility and, and community for uh, possible future testing. We started manufacturing here in North America and they're going to need a, a test location here. Uh, they'd start out rather small but uh, I think it was very encouraging and I didn't want to mention them publicly but they, uh, they have a lot of uh, ties to the area uh, historically. And I want to thank uh, Mayor Anderson for joining us for lunch as well and uh, welcoming them to our community. I know that always goes, goes a long way, so looking forward to that. Mr. Chair, one question. Uh, call it in. Did they get their facilities running again? The December, restaurant? December 1st. Uh, December. You're talking about the bar and yeah. the restaurant? Yeah, because that's kind of critical for it the is. weather yeah, testers. Yeah. yeah, we're concerned that the City Council approved uh, licenses for them on uh, Monday evening. Restaurant and bar. Yeah, that's a good point. It's that's critical to have. I shouldn't have said holiday, and I'll always think nope. of it as holiday. And you know, it's a separate corporation that's going to run the bar and, and uh, okay, from the American. Good, but uh, some tie to the present ownership. Okay. The other thing that underscores is when you lose. JCs, there that we don't have a lot of venues for some of these events that can handle larger crowds in, in, in the area. And stuff. Um, foreign trade zone. Uh, we received formal notification. I know Mayor Anderson brought up the last meeting. We were, we, they've been going through the process, but the, uh, the commerce department. I misspelled it. Your commerce department, foreign trade zones board, uh, provided formal notification that DigiKey's application for uh, a subzone status at their facility in Thief River has been accepted. And again, I'll point out that this won't create jobs here locally, but we will get an ad, uh, annual uh, admin fee, and we'll get a relationship, hopefully starting with DigiKey, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to uh, get some sort of press release in conjunction with DigiKey about this. And what's interesting is I got a call from Colin Peterson's office, Representative Peterson's office, um, uh, saying that uh, congratulating us and DigiKey and also saying I think you'll be hearing from some other manufacturers because this tariff issue has shifted the economics enough so that they're starting to look at the benefits of a zone and sure enough a week later I got a call from it's now Textron, uh, Thief, uh, Articat, uh, Thief River um, and they had a long, lengthy discussion with their logistics person and because of the tariffs um, they're looking at the foreign trade zone again um, but as we talk, the manufacturing facility that they have in St. Cloud would probably be the best candidate, or would be the best candidate. So uh, they're having a discussion with St. Paul or Minneapolis, which covers that geography of the state. Um, but it was encouraging. It's you know we created that zone in 2003, and uh, have struggled to to get uh, some activity. And again, this won't pre create jobs on the ground. It will create uh, approximately five thousand dollars in. Uh, admin fees and and start a, a relationship with. Did uh, uh, you, Mr. Chairman? Uh, just a question on that. Uh, our foreign trade zone covers the entire county. Correct. And and so um, extending it over to Pennington County with Deep River. <sighs> Our zone physically is, in the, is expanded into the entire county, but because of our geography, we're the closest grantee to them, that they become part of our jurisdiction. Um, so that's why they have to go through a process to get uh, a subzone application. And it's basically for their large expansion that they're putting in over in Thief River. Uh, it will, the entire facility will be a, a subzone under our zone. But we'll get to report all their activity on our annual report. So again, it puts us on the map in that regard. The five thousand negotiable. Uh, we're just uh, we'll take it. <laughs> we'll take it. Yeah. But hopefully, you know, we, we get to record all their activity. Um, and one last thing, um, Deed uh, puts out an, a 
annual publication that they use for marketing the state when they go to various trade shows. Um, uh, this is mailed out to site selection people. It's also when they go to the site selection um, conferences, they use this publication to basically market the entire state. Um, so it's got a lot of a lot of leg room. Um, it gets a lot of exposure, and we put a uh, small uh, third page ad in here, um, uh, marketing uh, our area with a kind of an emphasis on um, our rail, our our transportation and our infrastructure, rail, airport, um, and uh, highway system that were a gateway to both Canada um, and uh, and the U.S. from from the rail. So. Um, just, I just pass that around just for FYI, but um, as I said, there's a number of communities and, and counties that have, have advertised it there. It doesn't say anything about being able to go to Birchdale here. End of the rainbow. Well, yeah. you can, yeah. that's where you start. It's the yeah. gateway to the rainbow. Anything else, Paul? That's all for me, Mr. Chair. Do um, you want to uh, just touch on the Veterans Service Office Agreement yes. as long as you're right here? Um, the county attorney uh, developed a, a lease agreement um, and because of some delays now we're, we're pushing it to uh, December 1 is the, uh, the, the lease, the, when the lease will begin. And basically we're going to cover the utilities except for the phone and internet and that will be the responsibility of uh, the VSO and we will be charging them $400 a month which should more than cover the uh, cost of providing uh, the utilities in the space. So, um, but beyond that it's primarily boilerplate. Uh, I look through it, it's, there's nothing here that's real, real complicated. But. Do you need a board action for anything like that? Um, or you to, to sign it or to? I would think that that would be appropriate. Move. Moved by Commissioner McBride, second by Mayor Anderson. Discussion? Call the question. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Anything else, Paul? That's it. All right. Uh, the city, county, and out county updates. I, I, in the out county, I, I don't have a lot. I told you that there's wire underground from Gannett all the way to Franz Jeveny now. Uh, uh, Minnesota Power is starting to put their, their big towers up in our in the area I am. And I know if you go to Big Falls, you, you see them. I have chatted with some of the uh, smaller uh, communities, Darton, Little Fort, <clears throat> and they've all invested in the last half a dozen years into a lot of infrastructure. And it's going to set them up very well as we go forward. But they're, I know they're, they're worried about the economic infrastructure of the current businesses they have and uh, uh, most of the entrepreneurs they have or, or, or business people they have aren't kids anymore. So they're starting to wonder and worry about you know, how we're going to still be able to maintain grocery stores, hardware stores, on and on. And, and that's a legitimate thing. Uh, what does the city have, Mayor? What's uh, well, uh, the uh, citizens have uh, approved the city sales and use tax, and so the uh, that cleared that second hurdle uh, after uh, passing the city council uh, back in August, and now the citizens having approved it, the next step is that it will go to the Minnesota legislature, so working with uh, State Representative Eklund and State Senator Tom Bach to be able to move that through the, the legislature for approval and then uh, begin working with the Department of Revenue and uh, hopefully we'll uh, be able to start uh, seeing some of that money collected uh, uh, by sometime in 2019 or uh, by 2020. So we're probably still a year away from, from uh, seeing that. Uh, certainly. Uh, Putting, putting all like, everything we can to, to get that going. To, to build on that, uh, Rob, how, how would that work? I mean, would it be a, a separate bill, or would it include an Amazon type bill, or so it just kind of floats through and 
it gets can it get stuck somewhere? Well, it'll be part of the tax bill. Oh, the tax bill. And yeah. so uh, it's it'll probably go through one of the subcommittees first, and then. Uh, but I, I told the mayor that I'm, I'm real good friends with the, uh, with the tax chair, with the incoming tax chair, and uh, we didn't get a tax bill last year, so I'm, this is the year that we should get one anyway. So I hope we will hopefully we'll get it done. So. There are three other communities, I believe, that have uh, had the, the citizens approved. That was uh, Wilmer, Blue Earth, and Two Harbors. And so uh, we'll be one of the four communities, I believe, that are going to the legislature for the special legislation. Um, significant piece of property, as our understanding, has been uh, closed on, and that's the uh, TP Motel. Uh, understanding that that, that uh, sale has been uh, completed between the previous owner and and new owners, and uh, a city attorney will be uh, working with them with regard to uh, the work on that cleanup of that uh, burned facility. Actually, they called me. I have to go talk to. I was on my note here. I have to talk to Len on the tax uh, issues there, you know, because it was destroyed, but the taxes stayed the same. So hopefully, we can get that adjusted. Uh, would just like to update the. Uh, Heat aboard on the uh, airport. Um, the roof, uh, still hoping to get the, uh, the metal uh, roof on the airport. Uh, it's, it's closed in tight with, uh, with a good uh, material, but uh, the weather uh, didn't allow getting that metal building on, getting the metal on the building. And so uh, uh, that, that has yet to be done. It could end up being uh, spring before we do that. However, um, everything is moving forward inside. The concrete floor was poured uh, yesterday, and so uh, that, that project is moving forward. And uh, of course, that would be a new home for uh, Kita and the Small Business uh, Administration, uh, hopefully by April or May of, of 2019. We'll have to jack up the rent or something. Oh yes. <laughs> so, uh, and then we've already covered the Northland. Uh, we've met with them and uh, support what's going on with Northland Council. Thank you, Mary. A lot of stuff. Good stuff too. Uh, one more thing in the old county. I, I got a chance to meet Governor-elect Walls. I had to lie to him a little bit. I gave him a hat that said North American Sturgeon Championships on it, my business card, and told him that I had this dream that he would be coming out to Bridge Jail to go sturgeon fishing. He said, and in fact, Governor uh, elect, I, I heard that it's on your bucket list. He said, well, it is. Who told you that? <laughs> well, yeah. It was a politician. <laughs> it, was, it, was part, it was part of the dream. And so he said, you know, he said, I, I'd finally like to do it. I, I'll do all I can to do it. And he, he left me and he, he, he uh, did his thing with the rest of the room. And just as he was leaving, he walked right up to me and said, Mike, I'm going to be there. The governor's going to go surgeon fishing on the Rainy River. Pretty nice. I, I thought maybe you'd try to get it for governor's opener at Birchdale. Well, you can't because the season <laughs> closes that day. No, but just do the governor walleye opener at Birchdale. Wouldn't that be fun? You know, it's not possible. I, I, I actually I talked I actually talk to uh, some folks here in town that know what the criteria is, it's just not possible. Oh, it's not. But, uh, you know, it hasn't happened, but he told me he's coming to Birchdale. Pretty nice. And I told him, I gave him a speech, you know, you're going to feel better, you know, it uh, doesn't <laughs> cure cancer, but it's, it'll make it, you know, it'll, <laughs> you can skate a little bit, you know, things like that. So, Good stuff. Yeah. Uh, the county got a lot of stuff going on. Uh, you know, yesterday we had a Countywide, all employees of uh, mandatory training, and uh, we had two different sessions one in the morning, one in the afternoon. On uh, it was pre presented by Minnesota State Sheriff Association and some other groups, but anyway, it's on de escalation and uh, active shooter and those type of issues, uh, which are very, very important to everybody involved in government. But then he, he said something really funny. We but he said, first time, he lived in Minnesota his whole life. First time he's ever been to International Falls. 
And he said, I always thought North was Duluth. He said, I didn't know this existed up here. <laughs> then he said, I, I, I don't really know how you people survive. <laughs> he said, I couldn't live here. <laughs> but anyway, it was very, very interesting. I mean, he, he had a lot of stories to tell you. Well worth the training. But, uh, and then after, after watching that, then I get home and watch PBS and, and watch all the uh, Antiva and, and those issues and white supremacists and, and the things he talked about. It's very scary times in this country. And we're up north, we're, we're not immune to all that. So just be aware, of, and like he said something that really stuck with me. If something doesn't smell right, it's not right. So you just be at, be aware when you see something, but it doesn't seem right that there's something wrong. So report it or be aware of what's going on. Uh, took my first ride up the lake the other day since uh, they got two lanes open. The road is really nice and it's, it's got some issues, but uh, it sure is nice having that nice wide bridge up there. I wish we had a, a, a snowmobile bridge there too, but it's wide enough to drive the brewer on. Yeah, I hope so. hope we can do that. <laughs> We're getting to that season. What else we got? Uh, closing all our highway projects. Of course, Mayor talk, touched on the airport. Uh, Budget. We worked the budget all day today. Uh, we're closing in on it. Looks like we're getting close. So. Sewer project continues to make. make well, we're we're at a kind of a standstill right now because of the weather. Although there there's some uh, few things being done yet, but it's probably going to lock up till next spring unless we get a uh, warm spell during the winter, which could happen. I mean, it's happened before. And, but the problem is then every everyone's dispersed and hard to get them back. There. So we're looking at uh, back into it early next spring. We have to started early in the spring because uh, you know we've got some uh, actually one of the resorts and homes that would be uh, without services if we don't you know don't get them like that they're gone for the winter so to speak so that continues it's been been quite an issue you know when you build a project engineer a project like that and, I mean I, I wish they could have been a little more accurate and I'm sure Brian feels the same way but there's just no way to know what you're getting into underneath that ground. You can, you can do these radar penetrations every 20 feet, but in that 20 feet you could have a you could have a boulder or a ridge and, and you know so those those become obstacles because when you're drilling and you hit a boulder for example, it sends it straight up and you can't back up and go again. You have to you have to pull it all the way out and then uh, excavate that entire thing into a ten foot diameter hole and then start over. So it's it's, it's frustrating that way. But a lot of, we got a lot of hookups now and things are things are moving. It's a, it's a big project. It'll be a, you know, it'll be a big step in taking care of the wastewater. Which, all, you know, I always tell people, why are we doing it? You know, we're, we're working up in the, in the other lakes. Brian sits on that board with me, and Rob has too in the past. Cap to to McCrean Lake, uh, Ash River. All that comes downstream to here. Everything we're doing up there comes downstream here to International Falls. So, for the future, it was the right thing to do, and hopefully, we keep it at that affordable price. We won't know that until we're done. So we may, if we have, a, we had some overruns on the jackfish, and we were able to, to incorporate those. You know, by extending the payments a little bit, we'll see what happens. I don't, I don't want to change the amount that we've uh, told the homeowners. You know, that we wanted to come in at. So it's always a gamble. Mr. Mayor, with the highway, highway 53 is in 2020. 50, 53 here in town. Oh, the, in the, town the, here. Yeah, the plan is to uh, to start the project in 2020. Um, it appears that they may end up uh, doing it over a two-year period where they thought they could do it in a one-year. Um, the engineering that's going forth and design right now, it appears that it's going to be a two-year project. But thank you for bringing up Highway 53, if I may. Are you, is the county through? Or? Yeah, we're done. Yeah. Well, yeah. That, well, I, I got two things I want to bring up. One. One, I want to ask the question. So you do have some hookups already oh, yeah. on the, uh, the system? Yeah, we've got... Cooch is hooked up. Yeah, oh, running. Okay. yeah, we've got... Uh, well, we, we've had a lot of hookups, actually. Yeah. So, okay. so to that end, it's been good. Well, then back to Highway 53, which uh, Commissioner Pavlik and I have been uh, <laughs> working arm in arm on that... Uh, Many years. ...on the improvements on Highway 53. And on December the 6th, there's a... Uh, public meeting in Cook at the community center uh, with regard to passing lanes. There'll be four more passing lanes uh, constructed in 2019, and there'll be two changes to intersections, uh, both uh, at uh, Highway 1 and at Highway 73, 
No, both at Highway 1. Highway 1 uh, South and Highway 1 North. north yeah. Yes. Highway yes. 1 North really needs it. Yes. That's a dangerous intersection. Yep. Well, and the one at South, uh, at uh, County Road 22 at Angora, yeah. they've had eight accidents yeah, they, in the last two years. And you would think, putting in a four-lane road, that we would have eliminated all that. But uh, it has brought accidents. But members of my opinion, it's, those are two intersections that come in at an angle to the main highway. That's it's always been a problem. Yeah. Of course, we wanted to get going on our, our stuff, but when they gave us the accident reports and Bob chairs the committee, uh, we agreed that those had to be a priority. But now we're, we'll get the passing rates. So it's but just to touch on uh, Mayor and 53, an issue continues to be uh, discussed. I've had many calls on it, and I'm sure some of the other commissioners have, and that is the intersection of 332 and Highway 53. It's a 60 mile an hour zone, and you have a massive truck crossing, north and south, and especially going going north. The trucks come up the intersection loaded, and the road is at, at an incline. So if it's icy, they got they a lot of times they have trouble getting across it, and you have a 60 mile an hour corner coming out of International Falls, and we've talked to the state of Minnesota. And there is absolutely no movement on to even move that down to a 50 mile an hour zone. So I'm just really, really scared that something's going to happen there someday. But we, we, we talked to Joe, and he's had no traction with MnDOT to do something with that speed. Wasn't there a excuse me, Wasn't there a <coughs> talk about getting the, the vehicle and intersection lights? Yes, it still continues it. Okay, but there's no, been no decision. With the, the flashing lights, if somebody's in the intersection, and even having a lighted, lighted intersection would help a little bit at night. Any improvement would. Anything else, John? Well, I think I think uh, all of those uh, going back to the uh, the advertisement. Uh, you know, we do have major highways coming into this area, into this county, and, and certainly uh, and very done. key and for economic done. development. And, uh, and then the airport, uh, uh, as well as uh, the rail, CN Rail and, and uh, MDNW. And, and I guess the MDNW um, I had a conversation with uh, uh, Mr. Larry Keep of uh, Rainy Lake Oil, and uh, he's making application for uh, uh, a grant uh, from MnDOT with regard to rail. He's been working with. Um, Darwin Joslin over at MDNW, so uh, that, that is happening also. Joanne, you got anything you want to enlighten us about? Are you busy? Yes, very busy. <laughs> Extremely busy. <laughs> uh, it's a good thing, though. Good. No, all good. All I don't good. see anybody here for public comment, so Representative, we'll give you the floor. Well, I didn't know if I did it under six or seven, but anyway, you guys will be the first to know. I am the new chairman of the Veteran Finance and Policy Committee at the Great Capital, so that's, uh, that's, Congratulations. A, that's a good thing. So I told the mayor the other day that there, that was a scuttlebutt, but it, and nothing was firmed up. And as far as I know, I'm going to be the vice chair of Environment Finance. So um, that's, that's two good positions for, for uh, Northern Minnesota. Um, I will be the chief author on the border to border broadband bill. It's uh, 68.7 million or something like that is what we're looking for. Uh, Governor Dayton's ta Go Governor Day Dayton's broadband task force estimated to bring Minnesota up to true border to border broadband. We need 100 million dollars for 10 years. Each each, each year. year. Each, each year. year. Well, we'll never get that, but. We'll move things forward. Lot of money, yeah. But you look at what LeSueur County is talking about, $350 million, and LeSueur County isn't very populated. That's why it's so, so right. expensive to do it, because they, they just have, like like here, they just have the small pockets of population. It's not very big either, is it? Well, no. But I mean, I've got three three fibers running through my yard, and my wife and I can't use any <laughs> laptops at the same time. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous, but anyway. Um, I'll be carrying the truck weight bill, and then one thing that I talked about: the truck weight will be estimated. They'll be able to estimate their weight so they can't get popped when they're because you don't know, you don't know what you're hauling. You've got an idea what your truck will hold, but there's a bill that <coughs> allows them to be five percent off, and MnDOT is only allowing that during the winter season now. 
and we're going to try to get it extended because we're providing some some uh, better summer wood chances for summer wood if we can get our roads improved so they, there's hopefully going to be more summer hauling too so we can be within that five percent coming out of oh, the help the truckers on that. yeah but to any way to help any way to help that in this industry out we can so I, I got a call from the timber producers and they've asked me to be the chief author on that bill also and then the third thing that I that caught my ear and Paul and I have had some conversation but uh, a few years back, Kia and the county and others had a cold weather testing facility plan that was line item vetoed, I believe. Um, with all the interest that we have, especially all with tariffs and all the other stuff going on, it might be a good time to take a look at reviving that. Next year is the bonding year, and uh, take a look at, at reviving that and see if you want to put in another application. So. Well, we've got all the paperwork. <laughs> so we had that approved in the House and the Senate. Herb. Anderson and uh, Bob Lassard were able to get together on that and uh, it was Governor Ventura had just got elected and we didn't even see it coming. He lying at him. Yep. Never forget that. We were all, what was that request? Uh, that we, so I think it was seven million dollars yeah. but I mean what we did we had I was working with uh, Mayor uh, Murray and Paul uh, McLaughlin. McLaughlin yeah. And we'd got we'd spent a lot of time out in uh, Michigan with uh, Seargrim, Seargrim, yep. the engineering firm and stuff. And they told they couldn't guarantee us anything, but they said if you can build a facility like we had envisioned, and they kind of did some of the work for us, you'll they felt comfortable you'd fill it. They couldn't get involved directly, and so we came back and uh, and went to work on that and got it through the legislature. We had uh, the property we picked was uh, 225 acres on County Road 8, all by Little Park. And uh, we were going to have the, because that's what you need for a, for a real world testing, is you need the, the plow knows better than anyone. You need the tracks and the curves and all the things that go with it. It's just pretty, pretty enormous when you get into everything. We were all set to go, and uh, Governor Bitchard. <laughs> but later on, he came up here for other events, and I said, why in the world did you? Do that, and he had, you know, he'd been getting information from other competitors, let's say, and, and what probably not correct, but I mean, anyway, that's what that's what did it. I mean, when he got up here, I mean, he, he could see that it probably wouldn't have hurt anything to add it, but it was, damage was done, and we we moved on. And that's when we came to the county and the city and asked for half a million dollars to build a coal box. Oh, and uh, <clears throat> Commissioner Larry Cheesey was sitting right right where I am today, and he had, he was a so it was McLaughlin and I, and I had to be down there because now I'm asking the board for something. And uh, he was the only one that asked the right question. He said, you have a customer? If we're going to put a half a million dollars into this? And we said, no, because we didn't. But, uh, you know, in those days, you know how hard it is to get someone to come in. But we were comfortable enough after working with Spirit Trip all that time that we would be able to fill it. So the board and the city council did go along with it. We went to the city council next. McLaughlin insisted we check the county board first. Uh, and we got the money together and put that, and, and Paul wasn't here yet then, but he was aware and watching everything. And uh, we got the customers and we kept it full ever since. So it was a good investment. Having said that, had we been able to build that full facility, we would have a lot larger testing industry here right now today. So no question. It was a real it was opportunity for us. It was our fault in a way that uh, we were inexperienced. Yeah. I, I know that if we went to do the very same thing today, uh, the groundwork would have been laid far better, but yes. we were just so giddy. Yep. And we got it. Can you believe it? Yeah. And well, then, uh, you know, we had neighbors that called and we, we didn't consider because we were young. Yeah, very true. Just one other thing is the evolution is uh, uh, Ron Sutherland was hired by Jaguar uh, Land Rover locally here. And he has now taken over the post of his boss. So he's moved up the org chart and he is highly thought of and he's based here but he does a lot of travel and then uh, a lot of you'll see a lot of seasonal drivers being hired now year round. So it, it is it is creating um, full time employment and uh, part time employment. Well, it does bring up the, I mean, you know, uh, our representation has improved greatly and, and I can't. Doesn't say you could, we couldn't look at something in the future here either because we're certainly poised for it. Well, I think, uh, Senator, I mean, Representative Eklund, you're, you're 
kind of suggesting that maybe we put that study back together and dust it off and look at doing a, an application for the 2020 uh, session. That's what, that's what and, I would. And that would have to be done probably by the end of this session because uh, the committees will start studying in probably before the, the fall of 2019. I would, what, what I would do as mayor board is, is um, <clears throat> there will be a call for proposals for the next bonding bill. I would dust this off and have it ready so when, when the call for proposals come in that, that it gets sent in right away and then and it'll be up to uh, Senator Bacher and to introduce the bills for it. Is this something we should dust off and have somebody look at? I think we need to bring it up to. Yes, because we need to get our estimates improved in order we to. We still have got some of the so yeah. ball? Yep. They have real dollars. We have to dust that off and I don't know who, who would look at it, but. Well, we've got some folks. Okay. okay. And almost everything would still pertain. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it'll be the added element now of autonomous driving, which will add another layer, and electric vehicle testing, which will be a, a, additional components. Yeah. So. Do, do you see Harley Davis putting on an electric motorcycle? Yeah. No potato, potato, potato. <laughs> <laughs> Never be the same. <laughs> no oil leak. <laughs> we need commissioner. Well, great. Yes, that's yes. exciting. Congratulations. Uh, the only thing we have left to do is to set your your next meeting. Uh, nobody has anything going on in December. No, there's nothing. <laughs> uh, generally, it's around the 19th. We well, have airport on the 19th in the morning. I am going to be uh, on vacation in Florida on the 13th, returning on the 19th, so I'm going to be... How about the 18th? It's a Tuesday. <laughs> He's going to be there. I don't think we're yet, we don't have anything to do. I don't know what we've got in December. I don't remember. 20th? 20th or Thursday. I'm God. Yeah. That's that's what I'm in the uh, corrections of the RDC. Actually, Wednesdays even. You know, I got to tell you, Wednesday's been tough for one of us. Uh, yeah. Can't go because that's yeah. when we've got all the uh, sewer the sewer projects. So when you change it to Wednesday afternoon, that drops one of us. So. I mean, either it'd be the 19th or the or the 17th, and that's you know city council, I imagine. Wednesday right? Wednesday mornings work for us. 17th in the afternoon. Uh, you're leaving I'll on? be gone. No. You'll be gone. Yeah. Okay. Well, so, even for the future, though, I mean. What, when are you leaving? What day? The 13th, the Thursday, coming back, Wednesday well, afternoon. We can do the 20th, Commissioner, and we can get somebody to take your spot. I think we could get a lot more done with Paul now. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of damage, maybe. Thursday, the 20th? That's fine with me. Yes, we'll, we'll, we'll work you'll it You'll just you'll get somewhere else and do it. We'll work it up, yeah. Or are you operating hey, one short? If you, if you want it at 1 o'clock, you want it in the morning. Uh, I wouldn't be able to make the morning, but I could do it at 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock at City Hall. You know, it's not to say that uh, occasionally we, we hatch out the last year. Well, would Friday be any better? I mean, is, is, is Friday the 21st? Uh, would that make you available? Actually, I think if I had an opportunity to be there, Thursday would be the best shot because corrections is going to meet for sure because we have year end. But ARDC was talking about not having the meeting on Thursday. I think about it. So, oh. so that may be an opportunity. It's not a for sure thing. Okay. okay. So right now we're unless uh, Paul, unless something comes up when we're at one o'clock, the twentieth, the day after you get back, and <laughs> you don't have to bring me an orange or nothing. Yeah. We'll have his director. You can bring a suntan. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're not, you really don't take vacations, do you? I, yeah, well, I've, I've, it's been a while since I, I just take long weekends. <laughs> Is there anything else? Motion to adjourn.